In this video I'm going to be reviewing and testing out the Ninja Foodie 5-in-1 Indoor Smart Grill. So let's get started. Inside the box you'll find the Ninja unit. Open the hood and underneath the hood you'll see a removable splatter shield. Just lift this little clip here upwards until it releases. And according to the instructions this is dishwasher safe. And behind this will be the heating element. To put the splatter shield back you'll need to slot this little tab here into the hole first and then bring it upwards, lift and release the clip once it's secured in. It comes with a 6 quarter cooking pot, perfect for roasting a full chicken, a 4 quarter crisper basket which needs to be inserted into the cooking pot and a 10 by 10 grill grate also to be used with the cooking pot by aligning the indent here with the bump on the back of the pot. Here we have the smart probe or thermometer which comes with a magnetic storage case and you'll just plug this into the right side of the unit here. And like I said it's magnetic so you can just store it onto the unit. It also comes with a double sided cleaning brush and also a user manual and a recipe booklet. As usual and as I've always shown in my previous appliance videos be sure to wipe the heating elements and clean the unit before using it because it does contain a lot of residue. Power on the unit and let's start with the air crisp which defaults to 390 degrees Fahrenheit and you can adjust the temperature using the arrows on the left side or you can adjust the time using the arrows on the right side. The roast function defaults to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. The grill function defaults to the high setting. Pressing the same button changes the temperature to max, low or medium. Bake which is also at 350 degrees and then dehydrate which defaults to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The start and stop button. and the thermometer button. If you press that without the thermometer in you'll see the message to plug it in. You can use the preset internal cook temperature or press the thermometer button again to set your own manual temperature. Use the right arrows to select the type of food, beef, fish, pork or chicken. and use the left arrows to select the level of internal doneness. So there's two settings for each level of doneness. For rare there'll be one and two. Medium rare is three and four. Medium is five and six. Medium well is seven and eight. And then well is nine. Going to grill some corn on the cob and the manual says to grill it on max for 12 minutes. Press the start button and it takes a little longer to preheat the grill uh, at least about 8 minutes. Once it's preheated the add food sign will show up so I'm just going to pop these in. You'll get a flip sign at the halfway mark so I'm just going to turn these around. I'm actually going to keep turning them over so that they cook evenly on all sides. So there's still two minutes left but I can hear them popping quite a bit so I think I'm just going to go ahead and open it and take them out because they look cooked to me. So 10 minutes is more than enough I think. And I just have some butter with mixed with some lime juice and chili powder and I'm just going to spread this on all over. And look at that they look great. Okay, I'm going to grill some chicken breast. I have two pieces marinated, one a little spicier than the other and slightly thicker than the other. So I'm going to put the thermometer into the smaller piece. 
And while that's preheating, I'm just going to remind you guys to please give this video a like. And if you are new to my channel, do consider subscribing as I do like to review home and kitchen appliances and gadgets. Okay, the grill is preheated, so let's place these onto the grill. And you can just hear that beautiful sizzle sound. And when using the thermometer, you'll see the uh, target temperature on the left side and then you'll see the current temperature on the right side and the current temperature will just keep on increasing until it reaches the target temperature okay flip it halfway let's turn it over and oh look at all those grill marks looks good this one's slightly darker because it's a spicy piece Okay, target temperature has been reached, so I am going to take out the smaller piece, the one with the thermometer. The other side didn't get as many grill marks as the first side, perhaps because of the way I placed it. But that looks really good. And the other piece, let's just take a look, oh that one has some grill marks on there. Pretty good. I'm just going to leave this in for a few more minutes because it's slightly thicker. So let's do it for five minutes. And let's turn off the preheat button. We don't need that. Open and close the lid. So there's still just over a minute left, but uh, I don't want it to dry out. So I'm going to open it and check it. And yeah, that looks almost done to me. Oh, beautiful grill marks on there and uh, darker as well. I think the back side of the grill is hotter than the front side of the grill. Oh yeah, they look so good. I can see the juices running as well. So I've had them resting for a little while. So let's cut into the first piece that I took out. Oh, look at that. Very nicely done. Can you just see that juice? Just look at the glisten on there. And also the grill marks you can see as well. That hole is where the thermometer pierced in you see and let's check on the other piece because I was a little worried that it may dry out but no absolutely perfect look at that so juicy I'm actually glad I stopped it just in time really nice look at that and because yeah I think it has more spices on it it's come out slightly darker going to use the roast function next and we just need the cooking pot here press the roast function and I'm going to use the thermometer so plug that in press start and it will preheat first and I'm just going to insert the thermometer into the thickest part of the breast of the chicken here add it to the pot and I don't want to waste any of this marinade here, so I'm just going to pour it onto the chicken. Okay, that's all done. Let's get the food. Open it up. Ooh, smells delicious. And look at that crispy skin on the chicken. Oh, it smells so good. The machine will have a rest sign on it to remind you not to cut into it straight away. So while the chicken is resting, I'm just going to scoop out all of this excess drippings so that it doesn't burn and smoke. And then I have some chopped veggies that I'm just going to add to the chicken juices here and let them roast a little. Okay, press the roast button and I'm going to do it for 10 minutes because they're cut quite big. Press start and the preheat button will come on but I don't need to preheat since the machine is already hot. Um, so you'll just have to open and close the lid again which is a little annoying. Okay, so the veggies are all done and oh look at that. They look so good. Smell amazing. Slice into the chicken and look how soft and tender that is. And look at all the juice. And I'm just going to cut the breast piece here as well just to see. Yeah, it's cooked really nicely. There's no pink inside and it's not overcooked either. I could see all the juices. And of course, how can I not do the chicken wings? So on the air crisp function, pop in the air crisper basket and set it to preheat. And it'll take about three minutes to preheat. Add a little spray to the basket. 
and add the wings skin side down. Now the air crisp function doesn't give a flip sign which is a little disappointing so I have to remember to flip them halfway. So I have some marinade left over here so I'm just going to brush it onto the wings here. So I did set the timer for 20 minutes to begin with but uh, I'm guessing that they're almost done so I'm going to cut it short by 5 minutes and oh yay they look so good! Okay let's take them out and I was able to fit in 8 full chicken wings into this 4 quarter basket And I have some lemon and herb peri peri sauce that I'm going to brush onto the wings just to give them a little bit of a kick. Oh, look at that, they look so good. And oh yeah, so 15 minutes was perfect any longer and they would have dried out. Look at that, so juicy. And I'm just going to show you how easy it is to wash away all this grease. I'm just going to run some hot water and you can see it all just slide off. Let's take a look at the splatter guard. Mm, it doesn't look too bad but it's only been the first couple of uses. So um, the coil seems nice and clean but I am expecting some grease to eventually end up in there so we'll see in a few months time maybe. Okay so I want to try cooking some frozen food. I have some store-bought frozen drumsticks here so I'll just use the air crisp function. Put it on 375 for 30 minutes. Because it's breaded I don't want the outside to burn before the inside gets cooked so it's better to lower the temperature slightly. Remember to flip them halfway. And then I'm just going to check with five minutes left on the timer because I can hear them sizzling quite a bit in there. And yep, they look like they are done to me. And just to let you know, you can't use the smart thermometer on frozen foods. You can just check the um, internal temperature once it's cooked. Uh, using your own thermometer if you want. Okay, let me break into this and just show you how it's uh, quite a bit hot, so I'm just going to use a fork. And yeah, it's cooked perfectly inside, there's no pink. So overall, yeah, it's a great addition to the kitchen. It cooks very fast for sure, but it does have a few downfalls, namely the no flip sign. And there's no way to store all the parts together so you always have to leave either the grill out or the basket out. And then every time having to open and close the lid when you turn the preheat button off can get a little annoying after a while. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment and uh, hit the like button if you found the video useful. And I hope to catch you in my next video.